today we're doing something a little bit different. We are trying out a new method of um, handling watercolor. And what we're really changing up is the line art. This little sketch is on Fabriano Studio watercolor paper. So it's not the highest quality, but it is what I have around. And it was completed with Prismacolor color pencils. Not Prismacolor watercolor pencils, but Prismacolor color pencils. Now I've never watercolor, like done a detailed watercolor on watercolor paper with um, pencil colors as my initial sketch. So I thought that would be a fun sort of thing to play around with. And since this paper isn't high quality paper and it's not very thick, it's 140 pounds, but it's very prone to buckling, we're gonna go ahead and just tape it down. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and mix up a wash using our Weld palette. Well, really the first thing we wanna do is take a spray bottle and spritz our pans just to get them activated and use our water dropper to fill one of the wells on our palette. And we're going to mix up a light wash of red. Go ahead and use a teeny tiny mop to apply said wash to the paper. Now, the reason I went with um, the Prismacolor is some color pencils will dissolve when you add water, but the wax base of Prismacolor isn't really going to do that. And maybe I should revisit this technique with a color pencil, a watercolor pencil, to see if I like that any better. Now, the next thing we're gonna do we're actually going to add some water to our half pan. The same color we're using with our dropper. And fill our dropper up and just go ahead and drop. And clean out our dropper. So we're going to let this dry and then revisit it. Unfortunately, the page was too wet to really take the technique very well. Um, if we were using a higher quality watercolor paper, we would have been able to um, complete the technique and had distinct drops. Unfortunately, it's sort of blurred out. So if you want to remedy this, if you're unhappy with the pooling, you can go ahead and gently dip a paper towel or your brush into the affected area. and sop up some of the excess water because that's the problem is we have a lot of water pooling going on. Since this paper is not really good at holding a lot of water. So something else we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and create kind of a modeled effect, sponging some of it up after the paper has absorbed some of this, I'll go ahead and try again with dropping. All right, now that that is a little more dry, let's go ahead and pick up some more pigmented water. Doesn't look like it's gonna actually be much better. So this is why I tell you guys to get nice, or well, maybe not for comics because that does get expensive, but nicer paper for your illustrations because you can't do a whole lot with this in terms of special effects. So I'm going to let these dots absorb and uh, actually I'm going to soak some of them up. I did want them in specific places. I sort of forgot about that. All right, so I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, so those pink drops are still not entirely dry, but they are mostly dry. And uh, what's ironic is that most of the paints in my palette have dried too, whereas uh, those drops have not. 
So I'm going to reactivate my paint, spritzing some water on them. And I filled one of my wells with clean water. So I'm going to go ahead and mix a skin tone. And um, if you've seen other watercolor basics videos in my watercolor basics series, you know that I like to use yellow ochre with skin uh, scarlet for Caucasian skin tones. When I mix darker skin tones, it definitely gets a little more complicated. And I'm just going to go ahead and apply a flat base color. And I probably will have to go uh, more yellow than this because there's so much pink when I tone the page. And I'm just using a Blick Master squirrel brush. Nothing um, too ornate. It is a nicer brush, but it is certainly not the most expensive brush out there. For me and the sort of work I do, um, the investment in brush quality really becomes apparent when we're working with um, threes, twos, ones, and zeros. Let's go ahead and also, since I thought it would be kind of cute and unusual for me to draw a carrot upset. Go ahead and do the blush and blend out some of that blush since the skin tone already dried and pick up some of that excess blush so it's less like a mask. All right, let's see if we can't get a little more color on her. mostly just curious to see how um, because I like doodling with color pencil a lot and I've been trying to do more mixed media work and I've also been trying to do more sketches that can be very easily finished um, so I thought it would be neat to try a combination of the two I've seen other artists do it um, I think with greater degrees of success then I'm going to be able to do it here and part of it may also be the small size of the illustration but it's kind of unfair of me to prejudge how this is going to turn out before we even have a significant amount of color laid down on the paper. Sometimes on inexpensive papers or papers that dry unevenly you're going to get pooling of color because the paper has buckled and um, areas where the paint has pooled and is more concentrated and then dried will be darker than areas that didn't have that issue. So sometimes I need to selectively darken certain areas while I um, while I work, just to make sure that you know I don't lose that my my shading doesn't become confused. All right, guys. So I um I had attached this watercolor straight to my Ink Essentials craft sheet, but I remembered, or rather, I freed up a piece of chipboard. Now this came from the back of a fluid watercolor pad. It's very sturdy chipboard. Um, so long as you're not hoarding them and keeping like 15 of them at any given time, you know, it really doesn't hurt to keep a few of them around for uh, the sort of instance I'm about to show you guys. You can stretch watercolor paper onto chipboard like this, especially if you don't intend on soaking the paper a whole lot. So we're going to go ahead and transfer this in progress watercolor over to the chipboard. And that way I am not, so I like to work on multiple pieces at a time as we've talked about. And when I have it taped directly to my desk, I can't switch between uh, projects. So taping it to the chipboard gives me flexibility. And it's also honestly more stable than taping it to the craft sheet since the craft sheet is just a very thin sheet of coated fabric. It's not intended to be a structural support, whereas this chipboard is. Now you could tape this or you could use your bulldog clips. But since we already taped it, I'm just reusing the tape I'd originally started with. So um, I'm sure it's pretty boring watching me tape it. I will just cut back in to when it's already taped. All right, so we've got our watercolor paper adhered now to the chipboard. And your chipboard um, can withstand a couple of uses like this. This is thicker masking uh, 
tape than I would recommend necessarily. I would recommend for this sort of application, a thinner tape like this, it will do less damage to your chipboard. Um, but I kind of go through those fluid pads really quickly because I use them for my convention watercolors. So um, I'm sure they will be another one to replace this one shortly. And um, since we're not covering any novel tech uh, techniques, in this tutorial, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and make the rest of this time lapse. So I'll visit with you guys again at the end of the video and we'll get caught up. So I'll see y'all in a bit. This portion of the video is time lapse. Right, guys so now we're finally at the um, speaking portion of the program again where we're adding white gouache and um, for me this method of application wasn't a standout method of application I was just interested mainly in trying something new um, something a little bit out of my normal comfort zone um, if you enjoy sketching with um, color pencil this might actually, this might be a worthwhile way to um, create more finished pieces without having to scan it or, um, you know, take it to a different piece of paper. Uh, the attaching my watercolor paper to chipboard technique using this tape was, um, isn't a bad uh, method either. This could be useful if you wanted to do a single large-ish um, sketch um, out in the field, but you don't want to bring a watercolor block. I mean, if you mess up, you can just pull it off and toss it the same way you would with a block and then reattach another sheet of watercolor paper. I hope 
video inspires you to go out and try something new, maybe get out of your comfort zone a little bit. You don't have to massively dive outside of your comfort zone. Um, sometimes it's enough just to do a little thing every day that makes you just a little bit uncomfortable and you can build up your tolerances that way instead of sort of like cold water shock therapy. The paper I used in this video is Fabriano Studio Paper and I found it um, kind of frustrating to work with. It really wasn't high enough quality to do what I needed it to do. Now I have used Fabriano Artistico Paper in the past and I do enjoy Artistico. This is just um, Fabriano Studio. And I think Fabriano even offers a grade that is more student grade than Fabriano um, Studio. Their collaboration with Blick seems to be um, an even cheaper grade of paper and I haven't tried that yet. But given my problems, with your studio paper, I don't know that I could recommend it. But if any of you use it and enjoy it, let me know. Speaking of enjoy, if you guys enjoyed this video or if you found it useful or helpful or inspiring, um, please take a moment and leave us a like on the video and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't yet for even more tutorials and art demonstrations. We update twice a week. If you really like this video, it would be a huge favor if you took a moment and you used the social sharing buttons beneath the video to share this video with your friends, um, family, other artists, anyone who you think might be inspired by it. If you enjoy content like this and you'd like to help create more of it, you can join my community of art nerds by visiting www.patreon.com slash natosoup. And for other entries in the ongoing watercolor basics series, please head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com. So I'm Becca Hilburn. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Thank you for painting with me today. I'll see y'all around. Bye.